Hi, I'm Canadian artist Roxanne Jervis. Well, actually, a couple weeks ago, I did a one-day workshop, and the title of the workshop is Where the Water Meets the Sky. And having spent a lot of time looking out at Lake Huron in, a, in Canada, it's one of the largest inland lakes in the world, I was always looking at the colors, watching how the waves were blowing or were coming in, and not realizing that a lot of people didn't know how to paint those colors. So what I've done is I've actually done the summer sky and there is a video on that, how to paint a summer sky. And then there's another video on how to get a straight horizon using this knife. I'm going to go and do it, but then I'm going to delve right into the colors that the water is when it touches the sky. When we look at this, the horizon line of the water, and that is not land on the other side, it has some really, really vibrant colors. And depending on the time of day and how much sun is shining and where you are, if you're in the Caribbean or somewhere else that's quite exotic and you just have a water meeting the sky, the colors in that line touching the sky are quite brilliant and I like to exaggerate the point. So what we're going to do is we're going to take along this line is we're going to take ultramarine blue and I thought I had the right brush out but I didn't and we're going to do a thin line of ultramarine blue on the waterline and this is my favorite brush lately. It's um, a tapered flat brush so it's flat this way but it's tapered and I find you can get a lot more distance with the paint out of it. So you can either go across where that line is, you can turn your canvas around and then just draw the line straight down, which is sometimes easier than trying to keep it horizontal. I'm going to do it this way because I want this on the underside of the horizon line and I'm going to hold this nice and tight. And you can see the colors are changing slightly because the titanium white paint underneath is still wet. Take your time, there's no rush. Now that you've got that line in there, you can go back and add a wee bit more of ultramarine blue. So I'm just going to go back and put some more Then the next color you pick up is a phalo of some sort and you just kind of join the blue but do a separate line underneath it. And I'm going to just clean the extra white paint off my brush down here. It doesn't really matter because it will be covered over later, but it covers a little bit of the uh, canvas in. And then I'm going to go back and do another layer of titan or of ultramarine. And then you can pick up some olive green. So now I have all of green on the brush. And again, I'm going to go underneath. And then I'm going to again pick up ultramarine to break up some of that olive green. Phthalo blue is deadly if you're doing a dark area. It's not really a natural color in its purest pigment. I find I have trouble with it. But when you put it in beside other colors, it's a wonderful, wonderful combination of blue.
then I'm doing short strokes across in order to break up that solid line, which gives you more distance into your painting. Notice how I'm not holding the brush like this. I'm holding it like this um, because I'm doing most of the painting on the side here. So if you can see that I'm doing it this way rather than this way. Oh, wow, rich. The colors are so rich. More ultramarine beside it. Now up close, it doesn't look as rich as it does in the camera, but you have to remember when you're painting, if you're painting right on top of it, you're going to see things differently than when you're standing back. And the best way to look at something is to reverse it through the mirror, to take a picture of it and look at it in the camera to see how it's really reading. As you get closer to the shore, now the colors become lighter because generally the water isn't as deep. So you can then and you see there's still white paint under here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of olive green in here because the water in this photograph is a little bit green and that's olive green and white. So that's what we're going to put in here. And look at that. More. It's using the white paint that's underneath to give us those green tones. bits of white canvas showing through and I'm going to actually leave them there because it does give the effect of a little bit of white cap here and there in the distance but make sure the olive green you're using is a transparent green and don't overwork the paint because you don't want it to turn opaque any more than it is when it hits the white. Notice too that I'm doing the brush this way sometimes and then I'm cutting through it from the side and that's what I love about these brushes. Okay, now we're getting closer into this area. So again, we start with some of the darker tones. Now you see here I just did a line and all of a sudden the paint is just a blob. It's not, it's not reading different colors. So quickly put some other colors in here. to now switch to a wee bit of yellow ochre with a little bit of burnt sienna on the brush because the shoreline actually is doing this and coming in on an angle like this right across to the other side of the page but I'm not mixing the two paints into a solid color I'm letting the two paints mix on the canvas the two colors I should say mix on the canvas And I will use a little bit of mineral spirits just to thin this down because I really want a wash under here. mineral spirits right now and I'm scrub this is what I call a scrub and I'm scrubbing in the shoreline and I'm actually going to take some of this paint off because it's really nasty we're just going to remove some of the intensity of this paint because I really don't like it and it 
good for you to see that people don't paint perfect paintings every time when they first start. I'm going to try to draw now with just the mineral spirits in here. Get in some of this shoreline. And then the water is coming here and over to here. All right, thank you. Lighten it up a bit. It's just getting way too dark. There is a lot of um, wet sand in this area. And uh, I'm going to just accent it a bit more. I'm going to use a tiny bit of olive green with the yellow ochre. In this case, I'm kind of half mixing it on the brush. I don't want the colors to be quite so separate. It's a pretty crappy color, isn't it? Maybe we'll put some burnt sienna with it. Give it a richer tone. There's a tiny little bit of a sandbar coming out here, so we'll just put a little bit of that over top of the blue. We have a little bit of highlight now. And when you start mixing white with these colors, the white becomes opaque, and I'm trying to avoid too much of that opaqueness in here. And I'm going to thin that out a bit with mineral spirits. This is titanium white. Using a combination of ultramarine and phthalo blue for the dark sides of, of these grasses that are growing on the shore and I'm wanting to keep some of these colors working around the canvas rather than having it all brown here and then all blue over here so by taking the side of the brush the side of the brush putting the paint on the side and jerking it upwards you can get a few darks in here wind is blowing so we'll have them kind of going in the direction the wind is coming from. Pure olive oil and or, sorry pure olive green Now 
know what's wrong. It needs maple's yellow. Maple's yellow with white. a close-up. I'll show you a lot of these brush strokes up close. One of the things I could do to fill in some of this sky here, if I don't want to put the boat in, is I can always put a few birds in. <clears throat> and I do that with not a sharp pencil, but not a dull one either. I think the sky needs a wee bit of clouds. One of the things notice is that at the horizon, the sky is much lighter as it is in the photograph. I'm just going to put a cloud in with my palette knife, just a light cloud. And to finish it off, you can sign your painting by using a pencil and just print your name in about an inch from the bottom and have it finish at least an inch from the outside edge. So if you decide to frame this, you've got room for the frame to be there without blocking your signature. There you go.